Good evening and welcome to the Gabba for the traditional Easter start to round two. It's the Brisbane Lions and the Blues on what it has to be said is a perfect night for AFL football here in Brisbane and a magnificent uh, evening. The number one broadcasting team in football assembled around me as you've come to expect here on Triple M Football. And let me start with a man who is back on his home turf tonight, originally from the Cooperu Football Club here in Queensland, kicked 1,242 goals. Four premierships uh, with the Hawks. The Chief, Jason Dussel. Good evening, Chief. Hello, Duke. Where'd you pluck Cooperoo from? That's where you grew up, Chief. And you, he's got a little bit of extra spring in his step uh, tonight, Chief, on the home turf. How good's the weather? I mean, it's a beautiful place. Even though Gary denigrated the place as we were coming here in the car from the airport, it is a wonderful city. You're well, suggesting home numbers that Chief's starting to work through? Oh. Uh, he had a little black book out, uh, Gary, that uh, had a fair bit right. in it. Hey, uh, speaking Three of the man, uh, on that. not to talk about the Melbourne Football Club, and who better than the man whose voice you just heard there, oh. the Lone Wolf, uh, oh. member of the team of the century, six-time All-Australian Melbourne Footy Club uh, legend. Gary, big week for your old footy club we need to get to very shortly. Yes, uh, I won't say I'm looking forward to it, but of course we do. It's been a big uh, week for Melbourne. Um, Chief had one job, really, because um, when we travel, we travel in a pack. And um, you're the lone wolf. You I'm not talking to you. You don't travel in well, a pack. Well, this is the point, and I tend to linger out the back, but I do expect someone to take the responsibility for... Uh, uh, taxi vouchers and all that menial uh, stuff, and usually it's a uh, big nose, but he was on another flight, so th- when you're going on the totem pole, the next one from down the bottom was Chief, and he had control today of the, of the taxi vouchers, and you couldn't even manage that. It was your arrogance that really was the issue, no, it wasn't. Gaz, because all I, I said, said, why wouldn't you take responsibility? You said, you... I'm above things like that. <laughs> no, that didn't. just highlights to people exactly no, how arrogant no, you are. I came out, I and said, I would Chief, have thought you've got one job. You would have your you mind said, on other things, it's Gary. Up, at the it's moment. upstairs in my room, and I'm not there's going a, back There's a lot to talk about tonight, And he made Duke pay with one of his channels. A lot. To talk uh, about Gary, keep that quiet. It's been shambolic. Uh, <laughs> it's fair to say our, our travel arrangements, oh, and, and it was very interesting to notice that when Chief thought he didn't have a cab voucher, no thought of putting his own file oh, there. No. <laughs> he backed no. away very, very no. well. I said, "Do you want me to go up to the room yeah. and get it?" And you said, "No, we'll yeah. be right." Because you thought your star power, you could get it done, but that's okay. I'm telling you, what you he said. Channel he said, Duke, oh. "Get your Channel Seven one out and pay for it." Oh, that would be my credit card that <laughs> I paid for that. And uh, speaking of there airports, won't be any reimbursement. Duke, did we see? Something unfold at the airport today? We need to get to that because... There's a uh, feud. It, we'll come to that. Uh, really? Chiefs demanded some clear airtime uh, very Dude. shortly and uh, the man in question mm. I just bumped into out there, two of the bigger names in football. Big. Uh, awkward, tense. Big. Rich on the line. We'll, we'll uh, get to that oh, shortly okay. with the Chief. He needs to speak about that. Guys, the Chief has demanded some clear air next. He's got something he needs to get off his oh, chest. Bang! Uh, involving big. Uh, some big names. Oh. There might be some focus back here in uh, the Triple M uh, box. We'll get Duke, to that very one shortly. One of the biggest names in the game. And the Wolf. A few. <laughs> it's been awkward at the airport, that's all I'll say. Uh, <laughs> and the Chief, Jason Dunstall. Chief, uh, something's upset you. You need to get it off your chest. Well, it, it came to me secondhand, Duke, but I had only heard about it in recent days of uh, a brewing feud between a couple of big-name football personalities that work on different networks, different stations. One's a superstar, no doubt about that. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, again, it was forwarded to me this information that apparently somebody had made comments really? about... Grandstanding when it came to the wolf out on the ground presenting jumpers for Melbourne's round one match and this sort of thing. And mm. apparently the wolf returned fire because we know he takes criticism well. <laughs> so you criticise the wolf at your peril. <laughs> he will come back. Talk, he will it? come back with both barrels loaded, no guns are blazing, no and just that. launched. And then <laughs> was it a launch? It's it a little. That no, was a good launch. Launched <laughs> and thank you, Warrior. Then we saw. Should we set the scene even further, Jace? Like. Gary presented jumpers to Melbourne players last week on the ground, on the green, as JB refers to it. That was reviewed by Mick Malthouse, and we thought Matthew Richardson has been grandstanding, to which Gary then had a response on classified grandstanding. This is coming from a player who had his hands up in the air when his teammates didn't kick it to him. I actually might have uh, the the audio, so let's let's take a listen. Has he? Is he going to tell me what's on the rundown ever? Let's have a listen to Matthew Richardson (laughs) on uh, Arrival Station and then the Lone Wolf hitting back. Yeah, I just think it, it looks a little bit like grandstanding to me out on the ground. Grandstanding? Like waving your hands around when blokes don't kick it to you in your own team. I mean, seriously. Oh, you had to get personal, guys. What's, what's the problem? 
Well, Matthew Richardson's a, a champion player, an icon of the Richmond no, Football no Club. Argument. Untouchable. And no you just one of the great blokes. You've attacked his credibility and his character. Well, Chieftain, when you when you label someone a grandstander. No, and, he didn't uh, label you a grandstander. He said he thought the act of presenting jumpers on the ground may have been grandstanding. That's right. So no, that's, no, that's, that's right. not no. you personally, no, no. but you that's decide right. to make it that's personal. Right. But anyway, let's cut to the no, chase. Not the may have. The two of them came together at the airport oh. today in Brisbane, oh. and it was a frosty confrontation, to say the least. Yes. We weren't quite sure how it was going to play out, so we all stood back and thought, uh-oh. They were like two gunslingers so coming you, from different ends. They eyed each other, other off. Chief. They eyed each other off, and then it was on. It's probably cordial at the, best. Oh, the <laughs> eyes did not leave each other, and I'm not sure that both walked away satisfied. You. That was the issue. All I will say in answer to this nonsense, and just uh, I wrote the book on this stuff, making stuff. Oh, up please. Chief, so don't. I accept his apology. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't aware that he offered up an apology. A, well, he wouldn't because you weren't there. I don't believe sure he offered an pretty apology. Sure he said you walked away because you I couldn't stomach it. I don't think he offered an apology. Anyway, he's a great man and he knows it and he knows I think he's a great man and uh, all's good. Are you 100% sure he apologised to you? On my life. You don't value your life too highly, <laughs> do you? No, i tell you what he did say. He said... Um, I wasn't talking. He goes, I'm oh, sorry about that. I wasn't talking about Melbourne. I was talking about the Bulldogs. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 oh, so you said sorry? No, no. So you apologised to Matthew Richardson? Did you not hear what you I just said? You just said, oh, I'm sorry. He said, I'm sorry about that. I wasn't talking then about Melbourne. Said, I said, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking okay. about the demons. Okay. So the Wolf apologised, Richard. That's great. What happens no, 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 when no. you come across Mick Malthouse next? He'll get the same treatment. Oh, <laughs> Oh, no. and, we'll, and we'll unload on Mick Mulder. Very, very selective editing by the big nose who's on shaky ground. Oh. Ah. I mean, this is the world we live in. No, Mick's point was, why do it out in the public? And my response to that, which you don't want to bring up, but I'll bring up, <laughs> was, welcome to the world of the media. There ain't anything in private anymore. He said, do it down the rooms. And I said, I'm not sure if you're aware, there's lock-off cameras down in the rooms these days. So... All good. We've got some news good. News from uh, the Melbourne Footy Club. But grandstanding or not grandstanding, Chief? From your, uh... I've got to side with the wolf on this one. It doesn't no, matter where you no, do it. That, after it all, doesn't that, matter where you do it. No, after no, all, that's I, just, I was, not, I was not, the answer, about, not the answer I, I was expecting. I was to be more about the feud. And I think the wolf actually apologised well, to Richo. Uh, because oh, you don't like, tear strips off an icon. Go and get Richo. He's next door, I'm he sure. Is. Bring him in and you will never see two men with greater respect for each other. Before we uh, put a final full stop on, on Melbourne as well, Gary, you know this more intimately than anyone because you're involved in the process uh, of Mark Neal and the perception on the football world, right or wrongly, that perhaps they uh, weren't a side that trained hard enough or uh, worked hard enough. Has Mark Neal's imprimatur been that regardless of... I am going to go in there and be tougher, harder and more ruthless than anyone before. Has he done that, Gary, but maybe at the expense of some relationship building early? Is that uh, an unfair thing to say? I don't know whether he's been tougher and harder than anyone there before, but his and the people who've gone into the footy club looked at it and after a week or so have realised that they've got to come a long way. They've got to get their standards up to a um, that Certainly the clubs that they've come from and look, that's all you want to do. You don't want to get yourself up to be a competitive 10th team. You don't want to get yourself up to be a competitive 6th team. You want to get into a top four position where you're challenging. And in their opinion, in their very educated opinion, as opposed to the people who write this stuff and say, oh, I think they trained them too hard, they needed to train hard to get to a top four standard. Now, this is game one into what is going to be a process. I've got complete faith in what Mark Neal is doing. I've got absolute faith in the playing group that they will uh, do it to the best of their endeavours. Now, whether they've got the talent and all those sorts of things will unfold. But, gee, some imbecile said that they, he'd lost the players. Someone dared mention that. And then when you challenge them, oh, I didn't say that. That's what I'm hearing. I mean, this is a sort of nonsense. Who was that imbecile, guess? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Now, Caroline Wilson said it that this is what she's hearing and I challenge her and, oh, well I'm not saying that this is what and on a, when you hear those sorts of things that's when you take a step back and go okay there are some people in football that just enjoy the you know the cut and thrust of trying to throw a little you know hand grenade into a into a club that have had some fragility and are on the rebuild so complete faith from my point of view uh, one game in I think the reaction's been 
slightly hysterical, but uh, that's the world we live in. There's that many people commenting on footy. There's that many shows that need to be filled. It's, um, it's probably where we're at in the world. Fair assessment. The one issue I'd get you to elaborate on, sure. you said... you ask me and I'll elaborate. You said... <laughs> You're not 100% convinced about the quality on the list. I know. It was interesting to read in the paper today, Dennis Committee of all sources mm, right. came out on the seven uh, yeah, blog on the, the seven 50s, website. Yeah, seven, the 50s mate. and 60s again, was he or not? Well, let Jeez. me get it out, guys, and then you can Can you respond. cut that up, Luke? <laughs> Did you just pot the great Dan before Saturday I even afternoon, Luke. got out what was going on? No, I was just asking. You just destroy him. Come on. He went on the Seven website and yeah. said that he thought it was a very bland list, that there were issues, big issues from a recruiting perspective, and that they hadn't done their job, and it probably wasn't a list that was going to go too far. Yeah, well, my point about whether or not they've got the capacity to get into a top four is everyone in the footy world's got that theory, and uh, re- absolutely legitimate question about it. And probably the list has been oversold in the past couple of years. I don't think there's any doubt about Agreed. that. So but maybe then we, as football media, need to go, oh, shit, I got it wrong. I think I overrated these blokes, and uh, we thought we gave them too much credit. So think that the personnel are in place, the resources are in place, the list is there if they're good enough, and got the ability, then they will improve. So now a frosty confrontation between you and Dennis <laughs> on Saturday. Well, we need to get to our second break, I'll Gary. Jeez, I'll yes. have to intervene there. On the Dennis oh. Committee uh, situation, oh. let me just... Not just, buttering up again. No. <laughs> Den! I'm just explaining where the 50 and 60 comment came to because Dennis referenced it last week after the game and mentioned that he was a Melbourne supporter back in the 50s and 60s and wanted to know whether that culture was still there and I challenged him on that then. That was the relevance of that. Not that Dennis was in the 50s. Oh, are you getting you on were. with Dennis okay? Don't know yet. I'll see you <laughs> <go> tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>